Hello. Bond Knitting have made this video to help you get the best from your Elite. Sue will show you how to set up your Elite, how to cast on, and how to knit some practice knitting. First, push the clamp through the hole at the front of your Elite and secure firmly to the table. Do the same with the second clamp, making sure the bottom edge of the Elite is level with the front edge of the table. Slide the row counter onto the lower back rail of the needle bed and position it in the center. Slide the carriage onto the top rail of the needle bed. Push the yarn feed into the center hole and the yarn spring into the right hand hole. Set your row counter to zero, zero, zero. Before we cast on, let's see the different needle positions. Here we have holding position, forward working position, working position, and non-working position. These needle positions will be referred to from now on. Now let's see how to cast on. Push the needles you want to cast on into holding position. Check that there are equal numbers on either side of the center mark. Sue is using 70 needles. Line the center slot of the cast on hem between the center needles. Lay the hem back on the needle bed. Use the single prong transfer tool to open all the latches of the needles you are casting on. Cut a length of shearing elastic. And lay it into the open needle hooks. Tie the ends together. Making sure the elastic stays in the hooks, fold the hem over and push it right back against the needle bed. Place the yellow card onto the needle bed and push the needles back against it until they are all in the forward working position. Remove the yellow card. Take key plate four and insert it into the carriage, making sure the slot fits over the bollard with the number four in the top right hand corner. Using the ball of yarn in the box, pull out several lengths from the center. Thread up by sliding the yarn through the yarn feed, up through the yarn spring, and through the center slot in the front fairing. Slide the left hand yarn stop onto the lower back rail. The V will be pointing to the center of the needle bed. Position it so that the inside edge of the base is in line with the last working needle on the left. Hold the loop end of the yarn until you have knitted the first stitch. Take the carriage slowly across until it has cleared the last needle. You have now cast on. Attach the clip to the loose end of the yarn. Slide the right hand yarn stop on as before so that the inside edge of the base lines up with the first working needle on the right. Knit for 10 rows. Make sure that the carriage clears the needles at the end of each row and that the yarn is running freely at all times. Sue is knitting on waste yarn so that the ribbing can be attached after the main knitting is completed. At the end of 10 rows, 
Break off the waste yarn. Rethread the carriage with your main yarn as before, so that you are ready to commence with your main knitting. After the first row, attach the clip to the loose ends. Now let's see how to decrease. Using the single prong transfer tool, bring the needle forward and transfer the stitch onto the next needle. Push the empty needle into the non-working position. Knit two rows. Pull the needle out and lift the stitch onto the next needle. Note that Sue is holding her knitting back with her other hand and that she's keeping the transfer tool in line with the needle at all times. You can use the three-prong transfer tool in the same way for fully fashioned decrease. Use the three-prong transfer tool to pull out the three end needles. Lift the stitches off and move them in one needle. You now have two stitches on the third needle in from the end. Continue knitting. You have now decreased one stitch fully fashioned. You can decrease on both edges at the same time if you wish. Now let's increase one stitch at a time. At the beginning of a row, bring forward an extra needle. Check that the latch is open and push into the working position. Knit the row. You have now increased one stitch. Always remember to adjust your yarn stops after you have increased or decreased. Sue will show you two methods for casting off. Let's begin with a chain stitch cast off. First, remove the yarn from the yarn spring and the yarn stop. Transfer the end stitch across to the next needle. Bring this needle forward and place the yarn into the hook. Draw the needle back, knitting the two stitches together. Continue casting off your stitches in this way until you have cast off the whole row. So that the cast off edge is not too tight, push the needles well back when knitting to form a large stitch. To help take the weight of the hem, you can hook up cast off knitting onto empty needles. At the end of the row, leave sufficient yarn to draw through the last stitch. The second method is the back stitch cast off 
and is used on finished edges that will be visible. Leaving yarn three times the width of your knitting, break it off and thread through a darning needle. Insert the needle into the second stitch, bringing it back through the first stitch. Pull the yarn through. Now, into the third stitch and back through the second, and so on across the row. When the last stitch is reached, Pull the yarn through to fasten off. Remove the knitting by bringing all the needles into the hold position. And then back into the non-working position. Remove the cast on hem by gently easing the knitting apart, carefully snipping out the elastic as you go. Sue is now going to show you how to put the ribbing onto your knitting. Bring forward the same amount of needles you used for your main knitting. Hook up the first row of main colour knitting onto the needles with the wrong side facing you. The waist knitting will be hanging down behind. Finish the row and push the knitting to the back of the needles. Take back every third needle into the non-working position, thus removing the stitch. Rehang the cast on hem. Make sure the latches are open before laying the elastic in the hooks. Push the cast on hem to the back of the needles. Now push the needles into the forward working position. Thread the carriage with main yarn and knit the required number of rows. You now have a series of ladders. With the latch tool hooked down, pick up the stitch that you removed from the needle. Turn the hook over and push the stitch behind the latch. As you bring the tool back, hook up the first bar of the ladder. Draw the bar through the stitch. Hook up the remainder of the ladder in the same way. When you reach the top of the ladder, hook the new stitch onto the empty needle. Use the back stitch method to cast off. Remove the knitting from the needles to expose the waist yarn. Pull 
pull out the waste yarn. Remove the knitting from the cast on hem by snipping out the shearing elastic. Sue is now going to show you how to knit the basic pattern stitches, starting with the lace stitch. Use the transfer tool to transfer one stitch onto its adjacent needle. Bring the empty needle into the hold position. Knit one row. Push the needle back to the forward working position with the latch open. Knit one row. You have now made one lace eyelet. You can continue to make more lace eyelets in this way to make a lace pattern. Sue is making a V-shaped lace pattern. You can position your lace pattern anywhere on the knitting. Here is the finished pattern. Now Sue will show you the tuck stitch. This is a very simple stitch which creates texture. Push into the holding position the needles required to carry the tuck. Knit two rows. Pull down on the knitting and push the needles back, checking that the latches are open. Knit one row. Select the needles for the next row of pattern, pushing them into the holding position. Knit two rows. Pull down on the knitting and push the needles back into the forward working position. Check that the latches are open. Knit one row. Continue in this way until you have completed your tuck stitch pattern. With tuck stitch, the reverse side becomes the right side. There are hundreds of tuck patterns you can make. Fair Isle is a method of knitting two or more colours in one row, sometimes called jacquard knitting. Bring into the holding position the needles where you require the contrast colour. Sue will knit a contrast colour on every third needle. Always knit the main colour stitches first by taking the carriage across the row. Now knit in the contrast colour by hand. Make your stitches the same size as the main knitting. Select the needles for the second pattern row. 
Sue is moving one needle to the right to form a diagonal pattern. This is how the back of the knitting looks, with the contrast floats being carried between the pattern stitches. Now Sue will show you how to knit a six stitch cable. Remove onto waste yarn one stitch on each side of the needles that you're going to use for the cable. Push the empty needles into the non-working position. Knit two rows. Using the three prong transfer tool, remove the three right hand stitches and hook the tool onto a needle like this. Now using the second transfer tool, transfer the three left hand stitches onto the three empty needles. Then transfer the other three stitches across to the three needles on the left. You have now twisted a cable. Push the six needles into the forward working position, making sure that the latches are open. Bring forward an extra needle on each side to make it easier to knit the next row. Knit six rows. Repeat the crossing over of the stitches every six rows, just like this. Latch up the ladder using the latch tool. Insert the hook into the stitch held on waste yarn. Hook up the first bar of the ladder as for ribbing, forming a new stitch. Continue up the ladder. Note how Sue is holding the knitting down with her other hand. For a long cable, you will find it easier to latch up the ladder in stages every third or fourth cable. When you reach the top of the ladder, hook the stitch onto the empty needle. Do the same with the second ladder. Remove the waste yarn when you have finished the cable. And this is what the cable looks like from the right side. Now Sue will show you how to knit in tarsia. This technique is used for picture knitting. Open the handle by releasing the catches and turn the key plate around so that the number four is now in the bottom left hand corner and the slot is over the bottom bollard. Knit across the row to position your needles in the forward working position. Lay the yarns into the needle hooks where you want the different colours to be knitted. Make sure the loose ends are nearest the carriage. Hold the yarn at the downward angle with one hand and take the carriage across with the other. Now lay the yarns into the needle hooks in the other direction. Cross the yarns to prevent a hole. Knit the row.
This is how you cross over the yarns between and underneath the needles where the colors change. As you knit the row, let the yarn run through your fingers. To close the hole on the first row, use the latch tool to pull the loose end through the crossover stitch. Sue has moved one needle to the right to form a diagonal pattern. If you've had any problems knitting your practice piece, this next section has been designed to help you. If the carriage jams in the middle of a row, don't try to force it. Open the handle by releasing the catches, remove the key plate and take the carriage back to the start of that row. You now need to unravel the row. Do this by pulling the yarn sideways and lifting it out of the needle hooks back to the start of the row. Check that the stitches are either in the hooks or behind open latches. With the key plate back in the carriage, take up the slack and knit the row. A dropped stitch is easy to pick up. Using the transfer tool, pick up the dropped stitch and put it back onto the empty needle. Push the needle forward so the stitch is behind the latch. Pick up the bottom loop and put it onto the hook. Knit the stitch through. Do exactly the same with a second loop. Pull the knitting down. By following these simple instructions, you will be able to create the garments in the basic pattern book. With a little practice, you'll be amazed by how creative you can be.